All right, doing something a little different today, making a reference video on this little Electron by Acorn. A fine little British computer. And I'm sure at the time in the 80s, this was found in quite a few households there in Great Britain. Uh, what this reference video entails, I just want to show what an intact computer looks like. And the reason why I'm doing this is I've been actually on the other end of this equation where I've actually had to go out on the internet, try to find pictures or videos of somebody with a similar computer because I was missing something or didn't have something labeled and wanted to compare what I had to what I needed. So that's, that's what this uh, video is going to be about on this particular computer. Uh, just to, not really to show it in action because I don't have a power supply for it yet, uh, but to show it uh, in in this uh, state that I have it, that way if anybody's missing something or or wants to reference uh, this video, they can. And so the entertainment value is going to be very low on this one. I, I admit that up front. All right, here we go. All right, here we are looking at the right-hand side of it. And this is if you're got it like that. Here's where the power goes in. This is a 19-volt AC connection, which is kind of odd. Usually if you have those uh, kind of power supplies that plug into the wall and there's a big brick on one side, that's, that's changing the AC power coming out of the wall into DC power that the computer needs. This is not the case here. This is actually AC power. And how I know that, it's labeled right there. And we'll get to that when we're looking at the bottom. But this is the right-hand side. All right, here we are looking at the left-hand side. And that is from the perspective of the keyboard. All right, so here on the left-hand side, we have the RF modulated video out. And it says on the bottom, UHF TV. And then we have video out, RGB, if you have a monitor. And here's where the cassette goes. And we'll look at the labels on the bottom here in a moment when we flip it over. This is the left-hand side. All right, this is the front leading edge from the perspective of the keyboard there. This is the front and how that looks. All right, looking at the very back of the computer, got some ventilation on the back, but the main thing you need to note here is the edge connector. There's the top row of the keyboard, ventilation, edge connector. And here's the bottom, and I confess I have not cleaned this computer yet. Uh, it still needs to be refurbished. I've never even actually powered on the computer because I don't have a power supply like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so this is a, one of my ongoing projects, but this is the bottom. So we got ventilation on the bottom, four rubber feet, and then you got the screws to take it out here, here, and I believe here and here. So I think there's four total. But here you can see clearly the edge connector. And uh, of course, this is the back of the computer. This is the front. So you can see the labels for each item that are on the sides here. So cassette, RGB, video, and UHF TV. Over here, you'll notice it says 19 volts AC for the power in. And that is the bottom.
Okay, so all four screws appear to be the same size. Comparing those, every now and then you'll get one where the one particular hole has a longer or shorter screw, but they all appear to be the same. These are not the greatest uh, of shape, but they appear to be Phillips head. We'll put those to the side. Now my computer's got a little damage here, and that one screw that was holding the case on was here and holding that piece on. So here, 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 and here. That's where I've taken out screws so far. All right, let's lift the case off carefully here. And I'm going to flip this around. Let's see. And I'm going to lean it against that monitor that's behind it so we don't have to detach it just yet. Let me adjust the camera. All right, this is what we're looking at on the inside. So this is where the power goes in. And it does its own conversion down to it looks like on the board plus five volts. And I'm reading it upside down, so I'll have to come back and look at it. I can see that one, but I can't see what the other two values are listed there. Ribbon cable connecting the bottom of the keyboard here to the motherboard. There's your RF modulator. And yep, this is the inside speaker appears to have come loose. This thing must have taken a hit at some point to see if we can get it in there, but it looks like it's a little bent. But if you look at this spot here, there's a, a slot where that should slide down in there. I think somebody made a, an attempt at repairing that at one time. This feels like, yeah, it's like silicone. Let me get that out there. We'll try to do a better job on that one. But yep, here's the speaker. Not fitting in there. All right. Let me see if I can get a little closer shot of this. All right, a little bit closer shot on the main board. And you know what? I might have to turn it around. Everything is upside down. Let me do that. Let's turn this thing. All right, this might be a little bit easier. Everything's the correct way around so you can see the writing and I got a copyright 1982 right there this is pretty neat this is the first time I've opened uh, this particular computer and this is a little bit closer up of the power supply side This is what it looks like all the way open. That ribbon cable is, is barely long enough to be able to fold it over flat. Here's the back of the keyboard. All right. All right, we'll get this button back up and uh, plan on doing a restoral on this one. Uh, the keys are a little bit yellowish, not too bad. I love the keyboard on it. It's got a nice sound to it and a uh, good amount of travel on the keys. Yeah, I look forward to getting this one going. I just got to find a power supply somewhere. I'm not sure if I can get one online or if I just need to make one. But it looks like uh, it's got a unique power situation going on where it just takes... AC power coming in and it does its own own changes on the inside to DC instead of having a brick do it on the outside of the computer which tells you how much extra room is on the inside of this thing here all right just a quick video on the Acorn Electron until next time